Yes. Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Right after the release of last week's Boss Doctor Rhythm DR3 episode, I was amicably ambushed by the great Simon the Magpie, and you could clearly tell that I was a bit tired. Mr. Magpie did a phenomenal job circuit bending the Orchid Synthesizer 81 for cars and turning it into the first top seagull of all time. Today we are going to talk about the Yamaha FB01. This classic 1986 FM synthesizer is one of the more compact Yamaha instruments based on that form of sound synthesis. No matter if you like FM or not, it is hard to deny its musical, technical and pop cultural relevance. We all know that the DX7 was the bee's knees back in the day, but not everybody could afford one of those bulky 32 pound keyboards. What is more, the OG DX7 was monotimbral. You could only play one sound at a time, even via MIDI. Its direct successor, the DX7 II, did feature some bi-timbrality, but Yamaha went all in on the FB01 and made it 8 part multi-timbral. Spoiler alert, they cut some corners elsewhere. When you search the web for the DX7, you will, without a doubt, encounter quite some animosity against it. One of the main points of criticism is the very minimalist UI for controlling the deep and complex synth engine. Yamaha addressed this issue by giving the FB01 no front panel controls for that purpose at all. He missed a Spockworthy logical step. At the first glance, the FB01 is ticking all the FM nightmare boxes. Limited polyphony, no knobs or faders, a tiny but hellishly red display and the overall looks of an 80s Toyota Corolla car stereo. The buttons, which, fun fact, didn't age well on my unit, are reserved for preset selection, system setup and voice allocation exclusively. Speaking of exclusivity, with only a few exceptions, the unit responds to system exclusive messages only. So you had to use a Yamaha CX5M, Apple II, Atari or other computer capable of MIDI for tweaking the synth parameters back then. Can it be that most people just wanted to get their hands on those stylish FM presets anyway? Oh yeah, the presets. Although the FB01 doesn't allow for the complex tones of the OG DX7 due to its limitation to four operators, Yamaha put a lot of classic sounds into the unit's ROM. Cheesy strings and brass, plenty of E pianos and organs, super digital 80s sound effects, and of course, that bass. Okay. Not exactly that bass. The original can be found on the TX81Z, but according to my research, there is a corresponding patch on the FB01 that, apart from a few minor tweaks, is mostly identical. As we have already started nerding around, no, the FB01 is not the sound module version of the Sega Genesis Mega Drive gaming console. Sega used the YM2612 chip for that purpose, while most Yamaha 4OP synths are based on the YM2164. Nevertheless, the FB01 can sound like a vintage computer game. The aforementioned YM2164 was used in the DX21, DX27, DX100 and several FM sound generators of other manufacturers like the Korg 707, so it can be assumed that the structure of their engines is quite similar. Unlike most other FM synths of that time, the FB01 has two outputs and you can send the voice of your choice to one of them using the left-right panning. There is a large variety of software editors and although the 4 operator structure has its limitations, even an FM noob like me can dial in a half decent classic pad sound. FB01 was quite a bargain in the 80s compared to its more upscale siblings and was available for 52,290 yen. Until recently you could buy them super cheap on the used market, but prices are currently soaring. Damn you YouTube Gearfluencer scum! For its size, the FB01 sports an impressive feature set. Why are there so many people who hate the little FM synth, like it messed up their favorite road trip mixtape Beyond Repair? We have already heard the FB01 in our little intro tune. Nothing to see here, please disperse. I wanna know if we can dust off some of the numerous presets in this 4 to the floor doorless workout.
wouldn't want to keep a crowd entertained with those sounds for an entire set. Most of the presets are dated and rigid. A real synth player might have fun with some of them, but they didn't really work for me even though I used them in conjunction with a Yomox bass drum and a Moog filter. I wanna hear some more abstract sounds over dark instrumental hip-hop beats triggered by the polyphonic sequencer of the Digitux. one had its moment. Some of the sounds seem to be a bit out of tune when using more extreme settings, but you get the idea. We all came here to hear that bass, which is called Solid Bass on the FP01. Let's use it as the deli meets in this postmodern retro dance music midnight snack, sandwiched between some crunchy Scottish Italian 8 bit 909 samples and a touchscreen 303 sprinkled with some 80s FM cheese. The Yamaha FB01 has its limitations and I can understand the critics, but at least for people like me it is probably the ideal old school FM synth. Super compact and multi-timbral, the 4 operator architecture is less intimidating than the classic 6OP engine of the DX7 and the low polyphony is something that non-keyboard players can usually live with. Sure, most of the presets suck and you can't adjust the synth voice parameters via the front panel, but let's be honest. Real-time tweakability has never been a strength of digital Yamaha synth from the 80s. Admittedly, my taste in electronic musical instruments is, um, how should we call it, special? So as the synth, groovebox and drum machine agoniant that I am, I'm asking myself who else might be interested in the FB01 and in which way it can be used today. Seasoned keyboard players with a deep understanding of FM synthesis will stick to the real deal because of the limited polyphony, stripped down engine and lack of controls. People working in ADAW have great plugins like Dext and the doorless crowd might prefer one of the more tweakable modern FM instruments, if they can afford it. Maybe it is best used as the time-traveling DeLorean of synth, with that bass on one channel and an 80s preset jam of your choice on another, automatically loaded on power-up and some stomp box FX duct taped to the unit. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.